Hey, good afternoon again, options traders. Well, a question that I get from a lot of traders out there is how do you select your strategies, whether it's the expiration dates and or the strikes? And they're good questions because there's a lot of different answers depending on what you're trying to do. But one thing that I'd like to share with everybody is a key insight about options that I think most traders overlook. And that is that the bend is the insurance policy. That's the key to understanding a lot about option strategies and where to select your strikes. So what does this mean that the bend is the insurance policy? Well, let's go take a look. As always, before we do, please be sure to click like and subscribe. It's greatly appreciated and helps to promote the channel. So the strike is the bend. What does this mean? Well, remember that all risk graphs bend at every single strike price. Whether it's a long or short option, you will get some type of a bend. And the bend, again, is the insurance policy. Now, that's assuming it's a long option. Now, the further in the money that this option is, the less likely it is for the insurance to pay off because it's very unlikely for the stock price to fall below that. And when you have that condition, a deep in the money option, the policy is relatively cheap. Now, again, some people might be saying, hey, wait a minute, that's going to be an expensive option because there's lots of intrinsic value. But remember, the intrinsic value is not the option. The option is what you're paying over and above that for the right to walk away. So if the option's 20 points in the money, there might only be 10 cents or 50 cents of extrinsic value on it. And that's why it's a very cheap insurance policy. On the flip side, the closer to the bend, that is the current stock price, the more expensive the policy, because now it's becoming highly uncertain if that policy is going to pay off or not, because it's so close to the current stock price. So this is all for your long options. Whenever you're buying an option, or let's say you're doing spreads or butterfly spreads, some of them are long, some are short. This applies to the long option. Now, what about the short options? Well, remember, short positions equal the insurance writer or the seller, and that's always an obligation. So you can also figure out where you would like to put your short positions by just doing the flip side. Where would you like to have the obligation to do something? But if you always remember that the bend is the insurance policy, it will answer a lot of questions for you. So for example, let's take a look at a $100 call. So we can see that this is a 100 call because that's where we're getting the bend, right there at the price of 100. Now remember, this is the expiration graph. It only looks like this right, let's say the final seconds into the expiration bell. But that bend is the insurance policy. And here's why. If the stock price rises, no matter how far, you end up making unlimited gains, right? This line doesn't end or flatten out anywhere. It just continues to go in this direction. There's not another option out here to change that angle or to put a new bend into the graph. So to the right side, yes, let it run. But what if you're wrong? What if the stock actually falls this way and bumps right into that insurance policy? What happens now? Now it flattens out. See, it limits the losses. If you have shares of stock, you would just be on the straight line, continuing all the way down potentially to zero. But that's why the line flattens right there, because the insurance kicked in. Now, sometimes people think this whole concept of insurance applies only to puts. But remember, calls are puts, puts are calls. It's just a question of how we create the delta hedge. So I've got a call option here. If I shorted shares of stock against it, then we go to this. We have short shares of stock plus the call, and that's going to do what? create a put. And we still get the bend at exactly the same spot. But now if the stock price falls, I can make money in an unlimited fashion, at least down to a stock price of zero. But if the stock price goes in this direction and rises, I want an insurance policy that says no more losses. And that's why the line flattens right here. That's the entire reason for paying an extrinsic value in any long option. It's an insurance policy. And just as before, once I have a put option, don't think that it's a put. Calls are puts, puts are calls. I can change these short deltas in this line leaning out to the left by just 
simply buying shares. And now if I have long stock and a long put, I get right back into a long call with the insurance policy at exactly the same spot. So it doesn't matter how you look at it, whether the stock is rising or falling, the bend is the insurance policy. All right, so now what about for multi-legged positions? Let's say for a vertical spread. If you have the 100-105 vertical spread, this is your risk graph at expiration. The red line is the current curve. Now, let's say this is the long 100-105 vertical. All right, so I own the 100 call and I'm short the 105. There's our two bends. But the long position is the insurance policy. That's going to be my main driving force. Where do I want the insurance in case I'm wrong? Up here is a short position. And the question to ask there is, where am I willing to take the obligation? Now, of course, if I have the right to buy at 100 and the obligation to sell at 105, then the most I could make is five points. But most people just concentrate on this and saying, how much of a credit can I get from selling this option? And you need to also consider, where do you want the insurance? And this is especially important for vertical spreads because remember, this black line is how you look at expiration, but you don't look like that today. Today, you're on the red line, and for vertical spreads, it is a slow crawl over time until you start getting very close to expiration will you start to approach those maximum gains, assuming that you are above the short strike. But it's a waiting game. And as we all know, lots can happen in the markets, let's say over the next 30 or 60 days. Always be sure to ask, where do you want the insurance policy? Now, what about if we have three strikes? So for instance, in a butterfly spread, maybe we have the 95, 100, 105 butterfly, and we can see we get a bend at 95, one at 100, and one at 105. These two down here are long positions. Up here is a short position. Traders forget that. Remember, the driving force of a butterfly, of a long butterfly, is that this is a short straddle. So here are the deltas from the short put. Here are the deltas from the short call. And you can see you've got unlimited potential losses if you're short that straddle. That's an obligation. So the question is, where do we want the insurance policy? So as these losses start to mount, where do you want to say, hey, no more losses, I want to go flat through here? Or if the stock price falls, where do I want those insurance policies? And just like with a vertical spread, it's an important question because for a butterfly spread, the profits will accrue if the stock is somewhere between these wings right here, these long positions, at expiration. So it's a very slow crawl over time for this red line to move up to the green, to move up a little higher, and finally all the way up here to the peak. Unfortunately, this is where we get into some really heavy negative gamma, and that's why most traders are probably not going to hold this much past, let's say, the halfway point up here. But the thing to see is that if you're wrong and the stock either makes a big move up or down, you're heading into losses. Where do you want the insurance policies? the stock stays here in the center, that's great. You're going to accrue the profits. But remember, you are not a profit manager. You are a risk manager. We have a short straddle. Where do you want the insurance policies? And depending on your outlooks, resistance, support levels, you might not even want these symmetrical. And that's where you start getting into broken wing butterflies. That's one of the many reasons why you might use a broken wing version. So just remember, when you are developing your strategies, think more about risk management. Don't focus so much on what you think will happen. It doesn't matter what you think because it depends on what everybody else thinks. So sure, you can have an opinion, you can place your trades based on that, but think about how you'll survive if things go wrong. Again, it's about risk management. And how do you know where you're managing the risk? Now you know that the bend is the insurance policy. So in setting up your strategies, think about where the insurance needs to be placed and you'll have a much easier time figuring out which strikes to use. And for anyone who'd like to learn more about the arts and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a Candlesticks and Technical Analysis course. It's all at optionsa to z.com. Also, 
please join us on Options A to Z's Facebook trading group, and you can find a link in the description below.